Now, I know that, you know, obviously court martials are not a laughing matter, but being an attorney, there's got to be some embarrassing cases that you've taken on or something that kind of turns into like some humor. Do you have any stories about like, like maybe what's the most embarrassing case that you've defended? Maybe not for yourself, but for the person that, that, that you're defending. Oh, I've seen so many things that are just outright embarrassed or cr maybe cringeworthy is another one, right? Things are cringeworthy. I mean, I, we, this is kind of, we talk a lot about Asia this time. Uh, a big one I've seen, you, you do, you do, uh, you're doing Cobra Gold, which is a uh, exercise down in Thailand. You get guys partying a little bit too hard down there drinking and maybe they're trying to meet their your future ex-wife down in Thailand. And, you know, they go out and doing things they're not supposed to and it ends up being maybe not their future ex-wife, but they meet the lady boy who's more beautiful than anyone else that's there. And I've seen that happen countless times where there's some altercation, they're bringing someone back and, and, and somehow it ends up being an orders violation or a general order number one violation. And, you know, it ends up being with someone you don't you, you might not have wanted to hook up with, right? And so it was, and Cobra Gold is a great example. And Cobra Gold is a joint exercise that the military does with the Thai military. And there's other other foreign countries do it too. It's a PACOM TSCAP exercise. I did quite a few Cobra Golds back when I was on active duty. So I, I, I kind of have my, I know about it. I remember there was general, there general order number one, obviously you can't, you know, a general order that there was that you can't engage in prostitution, plain and simple. Just don't do it, even though it may be everywhere. And we had someone that was fairly senior bring back uh, someone he thought was a girl, and it wasn't. And had he been sober, he might have realized this and was caught bringing her back in through the hotel. And there's hotel security, and someone saw it, and someone reported it, right? And so end up he ended up getting NJP, but there's video of this now, video of him. He's fairly senior bringing back a lady boy back through the hotel. And if you don't think on a small exercise that that spreads like wildfire, that everyone, somehow that's supposed to stay controlled, it doesn't. God, it was brutal for him. You know what I mean? And so how do you live that down? Um, whether that's what you wanted or not what you wanted now, but there's on video and this happened and you violated the order. So not the end of the world, obviously, um, but it's pretty embarrassing for him. And that's, I, I've seen that countless times in the Philippines and in Asia on, on Balakatan, just another exercise, Cobra Gold we mentioned, and there are numerous exercises that go out throughout Asia. And this seems to be something that, that is common. At least it was back when I was in the military, um, when I was doing those exercises. And, you know, you know, I may not see it as much on my level as a civilian anymore, but it's definitely out there. Um, so that I mean, that comes to mind is probably the most embarrassing thing I've ever seen. Other things are just cringeworthy, right? And so in terms of text messages you may send or relationships you think are secret and you're talking about, you know, different body parts of yours and, and, and explaining them in all sorts of interesting ways and communications you think are private. And by the way, if you put something in a text message, I got news for you. Nothing's ever private, right? And so, of course, when this relationship comes out or there's a complaint made against you, the accuser, the person you were sending all these great photographs to, photographs of yourself, photographs of yourself and all sorts of outfits you probably wouldn't want the military to know you were wearing, um, it, it all comes out, right? And so now I, I come across my desk and I see a 15 6 investigation, like, oh, wow, the colonel's wearing drag. That's something I didn't expect to see. Uh, or, you know, or, or the, the colonel's or, or the colonel or sergeant major's describing his genitalia um, with, you know, you know, relating it to military equipment or whatever it happens to be. It's really worthy. You have no idea how many people have eyes on this stuff. And so everyone, the JAG, the JAG office is going to have eyes on it. Your command is going to have eyes on it. It's going to go up to the general or the admiral potentially. And so just be really careful with what you put in text messages or photos that you send, because if there's an accusation made against you, they're discoverable and they become pretty embarrassing. Um, so that's what, that's what I've, <clears throat> that, that's a lot of what I've seen in that regard. A lot of these embarrassing moments might come out, but like, as an attorney, can you help like maybe protect it from coming out like publicly somehow? I mean, I know that they probably have to go through, if it's going through court martial stuff, then all the stuff is going to be the dirty laundry per se is going to be, has to be there as evidence, right? But is there a way to protect your reputation as you're going through this? Is, is there anything that you can do? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there are definitely ways you can, you want to control this. And one of the first things that you, you need to do in this situation, if you're a defense attorney, is try to control the dissemination of information. This information should not be disseminated beyond people that need to know about it. But oftentimes it is, it, it just is. Um, and so you got to be very vigilant about what's out there. Another thing we see now too, is things get posted to YouTube. I and mean, we're, we're actively working on a case. I can't talk too much about it, but it was someone who got caught up in a vigilante. It's like a to catch a predator operation where someone is using 
you know, trying to pretend like they're a minor online, but what they're doing is actually they're not showing pictures of a minor. They're baiting people to come and then accusing them and putting it all on video and throwing it up online um, to make to make money and monetize this. So they're really baiting service members. And then they won't cooperate with police. They won't cooperate with law enforcement. So we don't know what if they're sending pictures of minors or or not of minors. But this we have got a case like that where we have a service member who was basically lured in by a civilian non law enforcement member. And his video was posted up on face on not Facebook on YouTube, and it's had forty seven thousand views already. Uh, and so this is incredibly embarrassing for him. And so what we're working on is a cease and desist and a takedown letter, uh, and working with both YouTube and against the you know, person who put this online to get it removed. And we, we're not a civil law firm, but there are certain civil actions that can be taken, and we're certainly advising this uh, the potential client to go you know, hire civil attorneys to, to potentially civilly sue these individuals. And so depending on the situation, but you want to be able to control the information. And while, you know, someone may think it's funny or a joke inside, the reality is once that goes beyond that and gets disseminated, it can be a real problem. And it can be a problem for your case as well, because you don't want this information that's out there. You don't want photographs or pictures of you being disseminated on the internet, because once that happens, it becomes really hard to contain. You know, for example, this video I'm talking about, it's not just on YouTube. Next thing you know, there are clips of it on Reddit. And it's, it's on IG. It kind of gets spread all over the place and containing it's very hard. So you have to just kind of take it out at the source. So that can happen, but you need to, it's really reputation management. And as, as attorneys, criminal defense attorneys, you know, I'm not, you know, we don't, you know, we don't get hired to do reputation management, but it's certainly something that we need to take care of for our clients as part and parcel of what we do. If it's a current client of ours and they're being slandered in online or in the media or even locally, it may not have to be on YouTube. Maybe this stuff's getting spread around the command, right? So this is something I saw. I wasn't a defense attorney in that times I was talking about in Cobra Gold and Bala Catan. But even when we saw that, you got to control that. Even from my you know, position as a, as a JAG, you say, stop, this can't go. I got it. You know, I, I got it. I'm tracking this embarrassing for the old man, everything else. But you can't disseminate this. It needs to be protected um, because people have rights about it. So absolutely, that's something we can do uh, if they're a current client. And, and a lot of it's really important to getting a fair trial. Uh, and, and just for these service members going through this process, because not only are they potentially going through a court martial, they have, in this case I, I'm talking about, there's you know, 40, 50,000 people watching this and it's, it's tough.